episode 252. We've got half a dozen loaners, and the only thing people have to pay for is the fuel, but we always made a deal with the Prius. You bring that in and you get the Prius loaner, you don't even have to pay for fuel. It's, you know, we kind of said, no, it's sips gas. We're just happy you came here, take it, you know. So I think people have thought that was kind of maybe silly or whatever, but it, it's worked. We, it's taken off. People come in and the first thing they want to know is, you know, can, I'm going to need a loaner car. And uh, we make a big deal about promoting loaner cars. I don't know how businesses that don't have them make it. I really don't. <laughs> Welcome, aftermarketers, to Remarkable Results Radio. Listen to learn just one thing from today's episode on your journey to remarkable results. Welcome, automotive aftermarket professionals, to episode 252 of Remarkable Results Radio with service professional Eric Carlson from Irvine's and Grand Rapids Hybrid. Carm Capriato here, delivering on my passion to inspire automotive aftermarket professionals to achieve their remarkable results. And I thank you for your support of the Aftermarket's premier podcast. Hey, this episode is presented by Federal Mogul Motor Parts. Search for parts, get the latest technical updates, and sign up for their new Garage Rewards Loyalty Program at fmmotorparts.com. Hey, a big shout out to my new Facebook friends, Great Bear Auto Shop, Kevin Allen and Robert Ullman, and new LinkedIn Connections, Kenneth Christie, James Curry, and Kevin Vaught. Welcome. And if you want to become more of an insider, get connected. I've got one convenient place for you to go, remarkableresults.biz slash social. Every possible connection's waiting there for you. Hey, every podcast episode has their own show notes page. There you'll find additional bio information and the episode talking points. Today's show notes with Eric Carlson is at remarkableresults.biz slash e252. Did you know that the Friday Town Hall Academy, that is webcast live on Facebook at 12 noon Eastern, also comes in podcast form? Well, to get your hands on these powerful educational seminars, go to remarkableresults.biz slash academy and prepare to hear your colleagues' passion and wisdom on the topic at hand. Hey, I want to thank you for downloading the RR Radio app in iOS and Android. The free app is an easy and smart way to listen to the podcast. Every episode is conveniently at your fingertips. Never miss one bit of the action. Just go to your app store, search for Remarkable Results Radio, download, and you are ready for your dose of insight and inspiration from every episode. Now get ready to hear from Eric Carlson. He's the go-to hybrid shop in Grand Rapids, Michigan. Eric made some interesting moves to make hybrids a growing part of his business. Hear from Eric how it happened from branding, training, and loaner cars. Eric shares his story that includes the purchase 24 years ago of a business that was on its last leg, and he got the heads up from his supplier. Eric's been recognized multiple times as the Napa Technician of the Year in the Grand Rapids region, and he also tells about his commitment to ASE and the time he was a subject matter expert. He helped work on the hybrid tests. Here's another enlightening interview in the growing content library of the Aftermarket's premier audio podcast, your on-demand source for everything aftermarket. Now here's the interview with Eric Carlson. Hey, a warm welcome to Eric Carlson from Irvine's Auto Repair and Grand Rapids Hybrid. Hello, Eric. Hello, Carm. How are you? Hey, I'm great. You've been on the show before when we did a great ASE round table on a Town Hall Academy. It was great to have you there. And I wanted to get together and talk about your great business and, you know, especially really focus on, on that hybrid thing. And I think there's a lot of people interested in that. But let's go back to the beginning. You and your wife, Jamie, bought the business in 1994. How'd that come about? Well, we had a, I was working at an area garage, not, well, maybe a mile from here. And the salesman that, the parts salesman from a real little mom and pop parts store was calling on both these businesses. I didn't even know this one existed. And I got to talking to him and said I was interested in uh, starting a garage of my own, but I couldn't start one from the ground up. I couldn't afford to build a building and that kind of thing. And if he knew about anything and time went on and Tom Irvine, who of course must who owned this, uh, wanted to all of a sudden he wanted to retire. He was done, and he was just going to lock the door and walk away. And as it turned out, Irvine's was this little mom and pop's parts store's biggest account, and they were really going to be hurting if he walked away. Greg, my sales 
Hillsman said, why don't you come over and talk to Tom? You two are so much alike. I think you'd really, and we do, we were, we hit it off right from the beginning. And oh, a month or two later, I, I quit that place and went to work for Tom for a few months to kind of get a feel for what was going on. And then, and kind of introduced myself to customers. Uh, that was very, very difficult for me too, because I'm not a go shake the hands of strangers kind of guy, but we did it. And, uh, that was, like I said, 20, well, about 24 years ago. And, uh, Tom was super. He just wanted out. He, I don't say he practically gave the business away to us, but he was, he asked very, very little for it. He knew what we could afford, which was next to nothing. And he really wanted it to continue. Uh, but he knew that the people he had working for him were not going to be able to do it. So no regrets, none whatsoever, none. And I wasn't ready for it before that though. You know, people, you know, I was well, 24 years, I'm 60 now. So, you know, I was, you know, 36 at the time. Lots of people start garages earlier than that, but I don't, I think if I'd have done it much earlier than that, or I, I would have piled it into the ground. Um, it, it was tough going even then, but, uh, but no regrets, none. Okay. So you, uh, you were a tech and now you're a business owner. What have you done to learn how to run a business? The school of hard knocks. That's for sure. I know, I guess everybody says that, but it absolutely is true. The most, the most painful lessons have been the most expensive lessons, but they've also been the, uh, the best ones. I won't even mention where I was at before because uh, that's a long time ago. But I told my wife, I said, when we buy this place, those two guys that I work for a couple of partners. And I said, if I learned anything, it's how not to treat people. They were some of the worst employers when it came to dealing with the employees, how they treated them. And I said, you know, I, I learned that. So that made a big mark on you. And, and have, you, have you worked hard to really build a good business culture inside uh, your place? Oh, absolutely. I think so, yes. Uh, we were really, were really focused on equipping the techs with, uh, you know, factory-level scanners and tooling that they need. If there's a specialty tool that we know is coming up or needed, the shop always buys it. We don't expect our techs to um, have much of anything. Now, the ones that we hire all have their own hand tools, but that's certainly not a requirement. But by now, the ones we're getting, they've been in it long enough, they just have them. But when it comes to anything else, as far as equipment training, you know, we send them to a training as often as they want to go and what's available around here. And, and they don't go to everything, but uh, for a large part, they do. And same with the ASE training or testing, I should say, and certification, we're a huge proponent of that. Most of the techs we get here are they may have four or five certifications, uh, but we really um, urge them and they know how we feel about that, that it's expected that they're going to continue on with that. And they do, you know. Do you pay for the training and the ASE tests? Oh, absolutely. Yes. Uh, yeah, testing. So far, the ones that, you know, everybody says, well, I only pay for the testing if they pass them. I don't, I don't, we don't really buy that. The testing one is not very expensive. And, you know, maybe you had a bad day. I don't want to. Um, you know, have them not want to take it again because of that. So yeah, but all of that. Hey, think back to the uh, transition when you bought Irvine's. Wow, now you're a business owner. What was the biggest transitionary piece for you back then that you had to learn? Just the responsibility of having other people dependent upon you for a living. That, that still weighs heavily on me when we don't, if there's weeks where, you know, you don't have enough work to do, or it's a little slow or anything. I mean, that weighs heavy. And I'm sure most techs, or excuse me, most shop owners feel the same way. They want to know that tomorrow or the next day, there's, there's plenty of work lined up for the, 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 the near future. And they've put all their, you know, eggs in your basket, so to speak. You know, they are dependent upon you for their living. And uh, we, I, I take that very seriously. And uh, so does Jamie. Jamie's a big one about calling people and making sure they're keeping their appointments and trying to network with things to try to make sure that we keep our our car count up so that there's just stuff for these guys to do. So your wife, Jamie, she work every day in the business? Almost every day. Uh, she, well, until very recently, she did. But now my daughter, Megan, who you just met, she works Mondays and Wednesdays and Jamie Tuesdays, Thursdays and Fridays. But that said, Monday, Jamie was here all day with Megan. I mean, there's many times that the two of them are up there. There's just too much for her to do. And she, she didn't get it all done the day before. So she's got to come in. So ideally, three days a week. I haven't seen that happen yet. I'm talking with Anthony Frowine, a technical product specialist with Federal Mogul Motor Parts. Anthony, when you're in a shop, are you talking tech as well as product? 
whenever I do a physical training, there is product incorporated pro- part of the whole uh, training overall, but it's to maximize the time, whether it's diagnostics, whether it's inspection, whether it's installation. So that way they understand that, hey, by skipping that extra 20 seconds by putting on this set of brake pads and not replacing the hardware, hey, this might be the reason why that I'm getting comebacks. And usually being a ex-shop owner, I understand that the first time you get paid, the second time's free. And so are the techs really starving for this information? Oh, absolutely. Um, a lot of times you have, uh, I mean, we live in an industry where I like to, like to say they, they cut that, the, the roast in half and they don't understand why, but they do it just because they've always been doing that type of an industry. So, you know, to break it through that, they've been doing something for 30 years and they see as they haven't been doing anything wrong, but it starts to open up their eyes to, hey, you know what? It wasn't necessarily wrong, but there is a better way. So you're really talking to me about an aha moment. Exactly. And tell me when you see that happening um, more and more from technicians that you're out with, uh, how does it make you feel? Oh, it's awesome. I mean, you really feel like you're giving back to the community overall. But ultimately, the way I, I tell them, you know, I look at every single vehicle that I worked on prior to, or I had my customer, just like I put my family in that vehicle. I look at it as I'm keeping everybody else that much safer because the job's getting done correctly. Federal Mogul Motor Parks' Garage Gurus is your go-to source for the vehicle training, technology, and answers you need to keep your next job on track. On-site, online, or on demand, the gurus are here to help keep your business and your career on the road to success. Visit fmgarageguru.com. I'm so interested in the rebranding of Grand Rapids Hybrid. And is Irvine's and Grand Rapids Hybrids equal, or are you pushing Grand Rapids Hybrids more in your marketing? I would say equally. Well, you know, we don't have to push Irvine's near like we did. You know, that's it's been around long enough. You know, Tom Irvine was around for 15 years before we bought it. So that's been a family run business for, you know, 40, almost 40 years now. So that's not been, you know, we don't have to work real hard at that. The Grand Rapids Hybrid, obviously, that's new and uh, new, newer now. So I would say that we probably work harder at the Grand Rapids Hybrid than the Irvines as far as promotional things. And I'm seeing that a lot where hybrids is becoming a very big part of shops, the way they market it and promote it. What was the driving force to say, hey, we're going to develop a brand new brand called Grand Rapids Hybrid? Take us to the day. We're linked in with Napa Auto Parts, and uh, years ago, uh, they had, well, they still have training classes, but they actually had some local ones, and one was on um, hybrid safety and kind of getting into hybrids, and I thought, you know, I don't know anything about them, and this is, I, I better know something about them, and it was a very basic don't kill yourself training class, you know, so that really, I don't know what happened. That's, it, it piqued my interest and uh, quite a bit. And they had a second one, which was we delved into it a little bit more, but, but that was it then. There was nothing else. And uh, I don't know a year or so ago went by and I mean, we had a couple of hybrids and Priuses, but they were just for, you know, change the oil, you know, do this, you know, don't never any real service work on them. And then I started calling around and uh, I've, I, I know a couple of different trainers that in the area, but they didn't do anything with the hybrids, but they knew, other people. And eventually you start calling around and, and doing a little bit of networking and find out. And so I hooked up with ACDC out on the East Coast and Jamie and I both went out there for that week long thing. And that uh, got uh, delved into it a lot more. And uh, But that's really what then opened it up that this is all possible. We can do this. I mean, this isn't, this isn't rocket science. Um, it's it's nuts and bolts and electricity, and I understand both. And so this is, should be something that I can uh, work on and, 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 f- and, and make a living at, if, if nothing else. But it's turned into much more than that. I've really, really enjoyed it. It's really taken off from there. Tell me about the words, it's really taking off. 25% of your business? I'd say probably all of that, yeah. It used, when we first started getting into it, I would hope for... The and the, the Gen Two Priuses are mainly what we work on. I mean, there's others out there, of course, but they're the they've sold more of those than you can than anything even. There's nothing close. A, a very well put together car, easy to understand anyway. Play. But we would hope for one a week. That was my goal. Get one a week, and then that changed to 
Well, maybe we can get two a week. Maybe now there is, as we speak now, there's five hybrids in our shop right now of varying brands and varying problems. Uh, that's kind of our, our high water mark is five, but we're almost always have one in the shop all the time now. So that's been very rewarding. And uh, that's really surprised me that in what, three or four years, I think it's been uh, that we've gotten to that point because there's been some slow weeks where if the hybrids weren't in, uh, you know, it'd be kind of thin, but that seems to have been our a way of buffering this, uh, the highs and lows in this business, you know, the seasonal highs and lows. Sounds like a smart move. Now, they're not just in for hybrid quote quote problems. I mean, you're probably doing brakes and all other kind of maintenance. Most of the stuff is non-hybrid. I hate to use say non-hybrid, but specific, hybrid specific. Yeah. Precisely. I mean, it's, like I said, there's brake work. We're putting an evaporator core in a Camry hybrid. You know, we're working on the ABS on an escape hybrid. I mean, so, you know, yes, kind of linked in with the hybrid, but not really. I mean, uh, so most of what we're going to work on has nothing to do really with the actual hybrid side of the vehicle. Eric, if you just uh, put a sign in the window or occasionally went to Facebook and said we work on hybrids, would it have had the same impact if you had not rebranded the place? No, I, I, I don't think anybody would have taken you seriously. You know, and you've got to present it professionally. I don't want to say brag about your business a little bit, but you've got to really, and, and Jamie did a wonderful, and my daughter, Megan, both, they did a wonderful job with uh, putting that out there and keeping it out there, keeping their foot on the floor of promoting it and making it relevant. And, you know, all the, I don't under, for the life of me, understand how, uh, how Google searches and all that. I mean, I kind of understand how that works, but how that keeps you relevant, but they do. And, they were heavily invest. We we spend a fair amount of money with Google, <laughs> and, uh, but it's all for uh, it's 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 all for a good reason, and it's worked. So you got a car. It's a Prius, and it's your. Is it a loaner? Because uh, I see you've got the logo on it. Yes. Yep. We originally bought it. Original. Yes, we bought it as kind of a, a driver around, but it was always bought as a loaner for other Priuses or other high. I shouldn't say just Priuses, but other hybrid work that came in. And that was, you know, normally we've got half a dozen loaners and the only thing people have to pay for is the fuel, but we always made a deal with the Prius. You bring that in and you get the Prius loaner. You don't even have to pay for fuel. It's, you know, we kind of said, no, it's sips gas. We're just happy you came here take it, you know? And uh, so I think people have thought that was kind of maybe silly or whatever, but it, it's worked. We, it's taken off. People come in and the first thing they want to know is, you know, can, I'm going to need a loaner car. And uh, we make a big deal about promoting loaner cars. I don't know how businesses that don't have them make it. I really don't. Just the complexity of vehicles today, rare that you're going to get most cars in and out in a day, um, especially if you're doing your job and looking the car over and finding other things. Um, and again, we're a big proponent of original equipment parts. So, you know, if the dealer doesn't have it, it's going to be a day to get. Anyway, it, the loaners have really worked out well. You've mentioned ACDC out East Coast. And of course, that's Massachusetts. And that's Craig Van Battenberg and his wife, Deb. And if anyone would love to hear an episode with Craig and Deb, just go to my website and type in ACDC or Van Battenberg and listen. I believe he's out doing some training in California as we speak. Yeah, that episode we did um, was just so much fun. Uh, we, they were both on together, and they're just incredibly passionate and unique individuals. So you just told me a secret a little earlier, and maybe you didn't know that you did. You told me you were 60 years old. So succession planning. You know, guys that are 55 are thinking about it, and you hear you're 60. You got anything in the works? Embarrassingly, no. I mean, I have no intentions of doing it. I mean, I've seen too many other people that, one, I really enjoy what I'm doing, but two, they retire or supposedly retire. They sit around. I look at them, you know, a year later, they're 30 pounds heavier. They're doing nothing. And I'm thinking, you've got so many years, good years left in you that uh, um, our most, I think our, our smartest years are ahead of us, you know, and what we can do. Well, 60 is the new 50, right? Uh, hopefully next year I'm I'm better and smarter at this than I am today than this year and the year following and 
physically I'm in, in fine shape. So I don't see what the point of just going, well, just because I hit that number, it's a, that's the time to walk away from it. Yeah, um, but succession plans could last for 10 years. And we also recently did an academy on succession planning. Great, incredible takeaways in that to help guys like you think about what, what may be my next move. You are an individual who proudly says, I don't work on the business, Carm. I work in it. So you're still turning wrenches. I have been working on putting a battery in this Prius sitting right behind me in the shop. Well, so thank, yes. thank you for stopping and do the interview. <laughs> <laughs> Appreciate it. Got it already done. So, Do you ever see yourself, you know, getting your role out in becoming more of the CEO than the tech? Possibly. I mean, I would certainly lark like that on certain days. I would like that and other days I wouldn't like that. So the goal would be that you'd have to replace yourself in the shop. Now, well, precisely. that is probably your biggest challenge. Well, certainly on the hybrid side of it, because I'm the only one here really that works on the high voltage side of them and uh, things like that. You know, we've got a, uh, the other guys here are perfectly capable of hanging on some pumps and, you know, and doing whatever else. To, but when it comes to swapping out the batteries or working on the inverters or anything like that, that's where I draw the line. Uh, at some point, I'm going to send these, you know, if, if somebody expresses a real interest in it, in wanting to you know, go to the next level, then I'll send them out for the training and so that they are properly equipped from a safety standpoint of understanding what's going on and, and things to check. Um, I don't want to be responsible for having to show them. I mean, I can show them on a particular car, but I want somebody to explain the theory behind it and, and go into that detail. And that we haven't done with them yet. So, because we're really trying to get this thing. If I had three or four hybrids in a day, and it was just nonstop. Well, absolutely, we would. I would be sending a guy out either to Craig or to Ryan Kuman, any a couple of a number of these other trainers, and uh, get them up to speed. And then, but that will that will all take some time. But but it'll it'll, it'll be there. It'll come. It will. I, I I'm I'm a firm believer that it will. That it absolutely will. So Napa Technician of the Year. How many times have you won that? I th I think five. Let's go with five for the in the in the Grand Rapids region. It's kind of a Western Michigan thing. I think it goes up to, well, we've got a town north of us, quite a bit north, and then down to maybe about the, the Indiana line, something like that. Um, I'm not exactly sure where it is, but, you know. Congratulations. What a great honor. I mean, do you have to take tests? Are you, are you just singled out because you know your stuff? How's, what's the requirements? They actually send you a um, kind of a booklet to fill out, and, you know, it's got – of course, they're going to want to make sure, you know, we got ASE master and, you know, we're L1 and now L3 with the hybrid, but that's certainly a, a part of it, but they want to know more, is this a well-rounded individual and in shop that we're, we're, we're giving this to, you know, are you active in the community, uh, whether it's your community or your church, or, you know, I do a, uh, and, and unfortunately it just stopped, but uh, I was in a mentoring program at the, the, the elementary school. There's a Mainly, it's probably 90% Hispanic, and there was a, a boy there, Enrique, that I had been, he's now just finishing up eighth grade, but I started when he was in third grade, I think, and so we've been going through all these, and they, they just want to know, are you doing things like this, you know, other, other things to uh, you know, promote your business and whatnot, and just be an asset, I think, more than, more than just being able to fix a car, I mean, uh, because I know that there's, you know, and I'm, I'm not trying to be humble. There are techs out there that um, are just, you know, completely into the, the technical aspect and whatnot. They live and breathe that, that know more about that than I do. There's more to it than that. So I love the mentoring thing. How did that start? Well, through our church uh, and Kids Hope was uh, a lot of churches, I think, are linked in with Kids Hope. But uh, every fourth or fifth Sunday, someone would come up there from Kids Hope and mention, you know, we're needing mentors. You know, they, they're always, there's never enough. And I just would sit there going, well, you know, maybe it's time. I don't know. I don't want to get involved. Hold it. Maybe I'm wasting my time. Anyway, finally, I said, I told Jamie, I think I have a class on this, a little introduction thing after, after church. I think I'm going to step in and just see what it's about. And that kind of got me hooked. And I thought it's time to do something here besides what I'm doing now. And so there was, it wasn't any, I woke up in the morning and said, I ought to be a mentor. This took some time before I, con, you know, before I convinced myself <laughs> that that was the right thing to do. 
but I'm really glad I did. Good story. Glad to hear it. Hey, you, you mentioned ASC, and I know that you spent a couple of years as a subject matter expert. I did. I got flown out to Leesburg and, you know, I got to play with some very intelligent people about hybrids. Tell me a little bit about the behind the scenes. What were what was a takeaway that you, you left the meeting and you said, wow, I didn't know that? The amount of work that goes into one stupid question. It, the, um, the test questions, it's one question can gobble up hours. If, if you can, it's, a, it's incredible the amount of time they spend to get it right, to make sure that the question is not biased towards a, a particular brand or a particular part of the country, which might see more of them than the other. Um, and it, it, it's, it, it, you don't have, they don't want to have it be so difficult, nobody can get it. And yet so easy that everyone can. I mean, just the whole process, I had no clue that they went to this much effort on one question. And, and look how many there are. Oh, my goodness. It was just incredible. A humbling experience, right? Very, oh, very much so. Yeah. You hear some of these guys talking. They had engineer. They get everybody from the industry, you know, uh, a sampling of all of the. So they had engineers from GM and Honda. They had a few. Uh, there was probably. Oh, maybe six of us from independent garages, and they have some from the dealerships. Uh, they uh, so not not just techs. I mean, by far and away, I think the the bulk of the people in there are not techs. Um, they may have been at one time. I think some of them that went on to work for GM in the engineering and and Honda. If I recall, a couple of those guys at one time were techs, but um, just amazing. And uh, there's some really, really bright guys working in on that stuff. You're a big, big believer and a proponent of ASE testing. So what's going on? Why why isn't the consumer just coming in, knocking on doors, saying, I'm only going to go to a shop that has ASE certified technicians? I think it's been a slow progression down a downhill, unfortunately, for ASC. I back in the day when I graduated from the Ferris, uh, the state uh, college north of here for automotive, that was in '78. Um, it was a big deal. I mean, uh, that to be ASC certified was uh, a real feather in your cap because it was not requ- well, still isn't required. Uh, employers really wanted it at, at wherever you went. I think over time, ASC. I think it's collectively uh, been blame could be ter- um, parceled around to lots of, you know, not only ASC for maybe not promoting it hard enough, but for the automotive industry itself, the dealerships, the service departments, independent garages, not making a bitter, bigger deal of it. We've always had the signs outside. It's been in our, on our advertising, on our web pages and all of that stuff. It's on our business cards, uh, the logo, but I think we're the exception. I, I, I unfortunately over the years, well, call it about forty years now since I took the test uh, first, that it's become in a lot of people's eyes less important. And so, why should the public care even know about it if it isn't going to con- if it isn't put in their face on a rather steady diet of it? They it just kind of gets forgotten, and it's really sad because it. I believe it really does separate the wheat from the chaff. I mean, uh, it, it, it has been from my, from my uh, experience with talking to techs that we've interviewed for jobs here and that when you get them on board, um, you can find out the ones that, that are good at it and can pass the tests. And, uh, you know, they know that area. There's no doubt in my mind. You know? So it's, that's why it's been an important employment, you know, hiring tool, I should say. Hey, what's the latest uh, piece of equipment you bought? I guess it would be our the new Chrysler, the the Y Tech, you know, the Micropod Two, which is it is unbelievable. You know, we had had the old one, and then of course they sunsetted that thing, and all of a sudden I went to plug it in one day, and I'd, I'd heard it was coming. That it isn't going to be supported, and you're not going to get anything out of it. And they weren't kidding, so uh, we we plunked down the I don't know thirty two thirty five hundred bucks, and there it showed up a couple of months ago. And uh, but I'm telling you what that. That thing is very, very nice. Uh, I hope that they stick with it. Chrysler being Chrysler, you never know. Uh, they seem to have a flavor of scan tool of the month that they fall in love with, and uh, we'll see what happens. But, um, but that's my that's been my uh, my favorite so far. I met you for the first time in Detroit at the ASA Connected Cars event. What did you think of that? I think it's going to be eye opening. I think it's going to be fine for the business. I think people have said, well, you know. There won't be anything to service on them and blah, blah, blah. And I'm thinking, why would you think that? 
still a car just because, you know, maybe it's not, it doesn't have a person driving it, physically driving it. That's not going to stop it from breaking down. And, but I was amazed at what is already there when they said was going to be years down the road. It's here now. I mean, it isn't in huge production numbers, but um, I, I think it maybe is governmental overprotection for the public. That's the only thing keeping them from cranking a bunch of these things out if they wanted to. Eric, are you working on all makes, all models? Nothing European. We had to finally say we we're spreading ourselves too thin and the test equipment and the, the training to keep up on European models. So domestic and Asian models. And, and as far as the Asians, pre- predominantly Honda and Toyota. You know. So if a customer has a BMW and a Chevy, would you send the BMW down the road or will you maybe hire a mobile tech to come in and help you? No, we would send it down the road, but we've got a, a we belong in this Napa a business development group. And so one of the shops in there all is, uh, uh, does a lot of European. In fact, that's how his, he got started. He does some domestic work too. So, but we respect each other very well. We like each other very well. We get along very well and we help each other out. So I send him down to him and he doesn't say, well, hey, guess what? I'm going to start working on that guy's Chevy too. No, that may transition to that. I mean, I, I don't know, you know, because he sends the hybrid work here. And, and I'm going to guess that once we start working on some guy's hybrid, it might just be easier for him me to start working on his other cars too. But we don't never intentionally go out and try to do that. Um, but so we've got avenues of sending him to uh, a very competent shop for getting that kind of work done. Do you see value in the business development group with Napa? Not as much as I used to. I mean, and I hate to say that, but uh, when we first were involved with it, their people were in the group were uh, open about um, how they specifically how they ran their businesses, the good and the bad and the ugly. They would reveal as much as they felt comfortable with some of the financial ends of it that would help somebody that maybe was struggling with that. Uh, but as time went on, and this now is years, um, it's I hate to say it, it's turned into, unfortunately, to just more of a social club. So, I mean, it's go out to dinner, you know, somebody will cater dinner in and nothing much gets talked about that is of much relevance. And I am, I'm, I'm sad to see that. I, I would like to see it get turned around. I don't know if there's, if there is any way of turning it around. Now. Have you ever asked your NEPA rep, hey, we need to do something about it? They're always there for almost everyone. They've seen it, so they know the direction it is, that it's going. Well, unfortunately, yeah, and it, I'm, they're probably happy enough that people are buying parts from them and that part sales are up. So you know they're going to rock the boat in a sense. So yeah, you know I've been told by business coaches there's no secrets out there in business today. It's you know it's just how you apply what you know. Right, and that's really what we wanted to know was more of how the successful ones, and there's a handful of them you can, you know, in these shops that you go buy them, and you know, these guys doing quite a bit of things right, and then you're, you know, a handful of other shops that are going, you can just tell that they must be struggling. You know, the the exterior looks a little bit worn out, and not not the nicest cars in the lot that they're working on. So you know, just okay. Well, how can we help prop this one up or help give them some good advice that will you know, without costing the guy a ton of money, it costs a lot of money for a coat of paint on a building and things like that. But you know, other things other than that, how did, how did you improve your car count or how did you, what, what did things did you do in a sense to make yourself successful? I, I love what you just said. Give them some advice. Shop owners willing to take some advice? It's tough. They get defensive that, well, I'm not doing anything wrong. Well, you wouldn't be in this business development group if you didn't think, in, you know, it was, would, would be a benefit. So um, none of us like being, uh, you know, shown our shortcomings, uh, either personally or professionally. So that can be a tough thing to hear. But as I said, too, at the beginning of this interview, um, the most important and and lasting lessons for me have been the most painful and expensive ones. (laughs) So sometimes that's what you got to hear. Very honest, man. Very honest. Anything holding you back right now? I don't think so. I like things to be to progress at a, an even, you know, even keel. I don't want to have extremes up or down, obviously not down, but I think if things get too rapid too quickly, I have a tough time adjusting to that and keeping, keeping up with it. So if it just progresses slowly, then I can keep, keep my finger on the pulse of that and, and keep it as much control as I, as any of us are capable of keeping on anything. <laughs>
So you just said to me, it's really tough for certain people to accept advice, you know, no, no matter what kind, personal or professional. Has there ever been any great advice you got that you never forgot? Well, I will go back to, I hate to even use it as advice that somebody told me about those, my two previous employers. Now, now of course, that was all, uh, still 24 years ago. And I, I just remember some of those butt chewings that they gave. Fortunately, it, I was a it was mainly a body shop. So I was one of only other, there was only two of us mechanical techs there. So they pretty much left us alone. Um, but the body shop guys, and it was really unfortunate how, how they got treated and they were nice people, the, 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 the help there. So anyway, what I, I think what I, that's, what's really stuck with me is it can make such a lasting impact on a, a person and how they're treated, you know, that, I mean, I still remember it, and I'm sure others do. And when they're when you treat employees poorly, you're going to get poor performing employee, and uh, he'll probably quit. And uh, well, what's the point? Well, what was the upside to treating them like that? There is never is any. So, any special words that you live by that you know a quote up on the office wall that inspires you every day? You know, we've made a real point here of try to be transparent with the customer, what we're going to do, precisely what we're going to do, how we're going to do it, and, and all of that. And I've really enjoyed that. So I, you know, I try to come in with a different a mindset of making sure they know exactly what's going on and communicating it without technically boring them to death, which I'm capable of doing in, in a heartbeat. So, <laughs> so but in words of wisdom, I, I don't know other than just, you know, that old thing, you know, Treat others like you'd like to be treated. I think. Any plans for digital vehicle inspections? Well, we do them now. We started out with a DVI, but now we're we're linked in with Shopware. You know, for with Carolyn, I'm sure you probably sure uh, yeah. talk with Carolyn. So uh, since May, we've been working with Shop. You know, we've used Shopware, and uh, I'm absolutely thrilled with that. I I think uh, everyone ought to give that a look at least, and uh, if they're unhappy with their management system, but that has all of that built into that. You know, so that's. That's a huge thing. I mean, it's a really nice way of documenting what you've seen, uh, a neat, neat way for the customer to quickly see what's going on with their car and, and we're communicating what it needs and uh, conditions of things. So I didn't like it at first. I mean, the DVI, I thought, thought it was kind of cumbersome, but um, there's a learning curve to that, I guess, like there is everything else. And uh, once you got, I got comfortable with it and the techs all have their tablets and, you know, they can go out and use them under the car and take pictures of things and whatnot. You've dropped a couple of really nice names here today, you know, Craig Van Battenberg and, and Carolyn Cocolet. They've been important to my, to, to me personally. I mean, Craig and Deb have been over to our house. We've had them over. Um, it was, it, they've just become friends with, with them and with Carolyn. Unfortunately, I haven't been out to San Francisco, but we've seen her at a, she's been at the AIC thing. Anyway. I'm with you on that. And just to tell anyone, just go to the website, search for Carolyn, edit an interview with her as, as a shop owner, although she, she does have a software company too. And it's, it's amazing, the multi-talents of so many of the people that I've, that I've interviewed. Eric Carlson, Irvine's Auto Repair and Grand Rapids Hybrid, thanks for being on the show. Well, thank you for having me. I really enjoyed it. Thank you, Eric Carlson, for sharing your hybrid strategy and for your honest and very transparent feelings on your business and the industry. That's why we're here. Where else would you hear Eric's story and be able to use his strategies to outline your quest for remarkable results? The show notes where you'll find the talking points for this episode is at remarkableresults.biz slash E252. Hey, thanks for listening. I hope you continue to find a treasure trove of inspiration and insights for your own business and yourself as a leader. And please don't forget that you have the Town Hall Academy Forum as a personal resource for your edification. Every Academy webcast is repurposed as a podcast. Some great subjects there to engage with. To find them all, go to remarkableresults.biz slash academy. Hey, everything you could possibly want to know about the show and the powerful content is on my homepage. Stop by RemarkableResults.biz and spend a few moments and explore. And please share this content-rich resource with your friend. I'm grateful and thankful for your support. Thanks for being on board to listen and learn from the premier automotive aftermarket podcast. Until next time. <laughs>